Broadcasting live from downtown Las Vegas, you're tuned in to Gorilla Cross Radio. That was a good night. It was, it was good fights, you know. Uh, the one fight I was talking about that was super awkward was <laughs> super awkward. Weird fight. Uh, just talk about the guys with Friday, Cort, uh, Cortillo, the, uh, bringing him in, even though he lost a little bit of the first round. I'm just curious, when you're, when you're evaluating guys, like, is that a knock against him at the end of this round, or do you almost like to see kind of going through it? I love to see it. I love to see, you know, different things. I love guys that um, – Literally, get that, that kid put on a clinic on him in the first round. You go back to your corner, compose yourself, you come back out, and you fix the things that you did wrong in the first round, you win the fight. It's incredible. I love them when people do that. What about Hill? What was it that convinced you? As you said, he's inexperienced. I mean, the light heavyweight division, especially at the top, man, it's tough. So, Who? The, the Jamal, yeah, yeah, Jamal. Yeah, so what was it that, that kind of pushed you over the edge? Well, the, the first round, I was like, eh, I, I, I think this kid's too young. He needs a little bit more experience, and uh, – but his opponent was tough, durable, moving forward, trying to win, uh, hit hard, you know, and, and you saw uh, the guy take some big body shots and, and, and shrug him off. And, you know, he was a tough guy he fought. And the way that that kid came out in the second round and, and, and went after him, I was like, I might be wrong. You know, you have to, you have to watch the whole fight instead of judging the guy on the first round. So. When you bring a guy in like that, do you, do you realize it's that experience? I mean, do you tell the matchmakers, hey, let's kind of let's, let's slow play this guy a little bit, or just once they're in, they're in? Listen, you know how it is here, man. This is, this is the fucking when – you, when you're here, it's all killers, man. It's, it's literally all killers. But I love when we get to see these kids fight here on this show. I mean, we see some of the most amazing fights on this show. You know, and to be here live in such a small venue and watch these things play out, I love, like I told you, every other season, I could do this every Tuesday for the rest of my life. What about Woodson? I mean, as you said, I mean, people are going to want to take him down. So, I mean, yeah. what was it you said, I, I got to have that guy? What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If you got to ask me that question, you must not have been here. You know, that's the second crazy flying knee we've seen in, in, in a week and a half, two weeks. And, um, you know, there's no secret. He knows He's got to go home and work on his, on, on his ground game some. But his takedown defense w was good. And, you know, the kid that he fought is an absolute stud. Right. He fought an absolute stud who I believe fought a very weird fight tonight. You know, uh, how long he stayed on the back and he didn't try to uh, get the mount or, or move anywhere else when, when he was so dominant on the ground. Then when he decided to uh, get off his back, the way he let go – scooted out, stood up and backed up was really weird. Yeah. And it obviously didn't work for him, you know? So the fact that Woodson came in on such short notice, did that like add Short points? notice, the way he fought. Um, when the opportunity was there, he took it and, uh, and landed one of the, you know, the second most beautiful flying knee we've seen in a long time. The last thing for me, the, 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 the last fight main event, so Steve Williams, you thought he won the fight. I think a lot of people thought he won the fight. Any consideration, again, you can give a contract to anybody you want. Yeah, I, I, I can't give it off a loss. Listen, the judges blew that one. I, I don't know. It was close, but if you look at power punches, damage done, he had him hurt in the first and the third. Now, where he messed up was, as soon as he would get him hurt, he's shooting on him. He had him hurt bad. Why are you shooting on him? Keep it standing. Keep throwing punches, you know? Little mistakes that he made that he'll learn from and that he needs to fix. He could have finished that fight in the first. He could have finished it in the third. He, he made little mistakes. You know, you make one mistake in this sport, just like the fight. He, he, he lets go of his back, scoots out, and backs up the defense in a fight he's dominating. Right. Gets hit with the flying knee. This kid has him hurt twice and shoots on him. So with Ramazan, did you even consider him really, or just since you thought he lost the fight, you just kind of like rule him out? Yeah, I thought, I, I thought he lost the fight. He's 5-0, and oh, um, but he needs work. He needs work. You know, you can't come in here and tell me don't blink. You're going in against some really tough people in here, man. You know what I mean? And he looked tonight like he came in with the don't blink because I'm going to knock this guy out attitude, and he ran into a really tough guy.
and, and, and had a rough night. What's that? If, if the drugs have given the, the fighters... I would have taken them. Yeah, I would have taken them if the judges, the judges scored it right. <laughs> you said third fight was weird. Is that another way of saying it's not the kind of fight that you want to see on the contender series? Which one? The awkward fight? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that that fight. Um, I mean, the striking, the striking was bad. When I say awkward, when you have a kid, you know, who's so good at jujitsu and they're still that young and green, you see a huge, you know, uh, difference in the ground game to the stand up game. And he, he's one of those guys. Um, and when you're, a, when you're striking, there, you know, there's, when I throw a jab, I expect him to do something. When I throw a right hand or a hook, I expect, where he should be, and those guys aren't where they're supposed to be, and it's it makes for a very awkward fight, and and uh, yeah, I don't want to shit on the guys. They, it, you know, they're they're both tough guys. They're both good. You know, um, they need work. They need work, and they're not ready. What do you do with a guy like Williams, who has been on the show a couple times? You said you would have signed him if he had had to be taken his way. So is he somebody that you consider bringing back? Well, it's yeah, it's 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 one of those things where this kid needs to. He, He's got everything it takes to be in the UFC. I mean, he's tough. He's got heart. He's got talent. Um, he hits hard. His ground game is good. He took a flying knee that would have knocked most people out and, and, and kept coming. Didn't even flinch. Shook it right off. Um, but he made mistakes in the fight. He made mistakes in the fight that cost him the decision with the judges. And, and I think he could have finished the fight. If he would have kept his head, why are you, you got this guy wobbling around. Why are you shooting on him? Why would you shoot on this guy when you have him hurt like that twice? You know, he made little mistakes that can kill you in this sport. Hey, uh, for Sean Woodson, how long will you take, will it take for you to actually give him a fight in the UFC and uh, ask you to let him work out his takedown defense? I don't know. I, I don't know how fast we'll turn these guys around. Um, but... In, in, in a perfect world, as soon as possible, I would love to turn all these kids around. You know, while while their fights are fresh in everybody's heads. Cool. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.